Ayan na, ayan na mga kameta, kamusta kayo dyan? Mabilisan lang ha, pag-usapan natin itong uh, isang issue na kailangan natin balikan. Uh, katulad ng pangako natin na uh, last week, uh, dapat pag-usapan natin itong West Philippine Sea issue, pag-usapan natin yung growing alliance between the Philippines and Vietnam or emerging alliance between Philippines and Vietnam. May sinulat tayo ukul dyan last week na it's gaining traction, it's getting uh, a lot of reaction. Uh, dahil nga, I think there is a lot to Philippine and Vietnam than, than meets the eye. And definitely, the Philippines can do far better dun sa nangyari sa panon ni President Duterte. We mostly focus on China and to certain degree Russia, but parang ni- na-neglect nga, no? Uh, yung shared interest natin with countries like Vietnam. If anything, yung mga pro-tatay pa naman dyan na iba, uh, na alam natin na uh, saan sila natutuwa, uh, ay marami pa naman dyan nagiging anti-Vietnam. But uh, before talking about that, mga kameta, itong issue ng Vietnam, Philippines, and China, uh, triangular dynamics, pag-usapan natin ng konti itong uh, um, implications ng, um, well, let's just call it a kerfuffle, no? Uh, na nangyari last week uh, pagdating sa domestic politics. And this is where we clearly see, mga kameta, a strong connection between domestic politics, and international politics. Now, katulad ng pinag-usapan natin the other week, mga kameta, uh, at least President Arroyo, or former President Arroyo, and now Deputy Speaker of the House, no longer the Senior Deputy Speaker of the House, was saying that her supposed demotion had perhaps something to do with rumors or baseless allegations that uh, she was angling for the top job in the lower house uh, anew, no? So, yun po yung konteksto daw ng kanyang demotion. Of course, she denied it and she uh, repeatedly emphasized that, you know, she's there to help the president. President Marcos Jr. also sinabi niya na secret weapon niya ever since si, si President Arroyo, that he has a lot of respect for her. Then, nakita naman natin si Martin Romualdez, yung ating Speaker of the House, also went to her, nagmano po. And supposedly, nakaroon ng makeup and all of that. Now, having said that, mga kameta, Upon further review of the issue, uh, mukhang lumalabas dito is that there well, is an aspect of foreign policy uh, disagreement potentially here. no? Because alam natin si President Arroyo uh, has very strong views on the necessity of making sure na ang Pilipinas po ay hindi masyadong maging confrontational sa China at yung kahalagan ng maintaining robust communication channels with China. Now, alam natin na si former President Roy actually kasama niya si President Marcos during the important visit to China, state visit to China earlier this year, and the working visit uh, to, to the United States uh, also uh, earlier this month naman, uh, mga kamet. Of course, state visit sa China, medyo next level yun. At doon talaga nakita natin na open ni sinabi ng ating Pangulo na tingin niya kay uh, President Arroyo is a sacred weapon because of yung kanyang experience o kanyang karanasan in dealing with uh, superpowers among others. Now, what's coming out, mga kameta, based dun sa mga iba't ibang analysis from different quarters. So, for instance, uh, if you look at this interesting article by uh, Manolo Quezon, my colleague in Inquirer, uh, he talked about, for instance, you know, the tendency of, or the alleged tendency of former President Arroyo to be quite open, no? Uh, quite open dun sa kanyang displeasure no with the direction of our foreign policy pagdating sa uh, yung ating lumalakas na relasyon no uh, sa sa China ay sorry relasyon sa America at how that can potentially you know put the Philippines uh, in a much more difficult spot when it comes to dealing with China or could potentially provoke China no uh, so yun yung argument ni uh, Manolo Quezon just to read what Manolo Quezon was saying i mean I mean, all, all, I mean, as columnists, we all have our own opinion. But there are times that, you know, when it comes to especially tactical analysis and detailed analysis, uh, let's call it uh, even mental analysis, I think uh, Manolo Quezon has a lot to offer in terms of analytic acumen, no, in fairness to no? Uh Despite some of the disagreement I may have with him on the bigger strategic uh, questions, but, you know, big strategy is what I do. Um, going back to this, mga kometa, Oh, by the way, mamaya natin pag-usapan yung conversation ko with Henry Kissinger, by the way. Uh, I was supposed to post something about it uh, over the weekend. I, of course, it was a 100th birthday ni Henry Kissinger, but I just felt better and I'll just write a whole article or column about it kasi very polarizing itong issue na ito. 
So, pag-usapan natin bukas na lang itong issue na to. Anyway, no, I'm just saying why I say, you know, I do big, you know, mega strategy, strategic thinking because yung mga ganito ang mga kausap natin. Mga yeah. Okay, anyway, um, going back to this mga kameta, um, so, I think sinasabi niya, no, ha? So, one of the interesting things that actually happened dun sa... Uh, pagbisita ni Pangulong Marcos sa US was that there was this important picture na kung saan nandun yung mga top officials ng Pilipinas. At ayon sa kanya, this picture was very telling. no Because dito sa picture na yan, uh, dun sa White House, ito yung arrangement po na nangyari, no which somehow violated the protocol. no uh, So flanking Mr. Marcos INK Manolo is Fer- Speaker Ferdinand Marcos Romualdez to his left, and then Senior Deputy Speaker Gloria Macavalaro to the right. Even though as his deputy, as a number two in the lower house, dapat medyo, dapat doon pa siya, diba? Following protocol. To Arroyo's right was Foreign Affairs Secretary Enrique Manalo who outranks her, somehow at least on foreign policy issues, some would say. And to the Speaker's left was Jose Manuel Reualdez who was, our, of course, our ambassador to the United States. Now, what caused a double take from season observers Ayan Kemanol Quezon was that the correct positioning would have been to have Ambassador Romualde seated beside the President since he's the chief executive alter ego in the United States and then Manalo beside the Ambassador. No? And yet, so, nakita natin dito na ang taas ng regard or literally yung position na binibigay kay Arroyo at least dun sa mga big pictures. No? Ayan Kemanol Quezon the speaker for his part ought to have been on the other side of the president and then Arroyo. Okay. As former as a former president, I sa kanya, Arroyo might be entitled to some courtesies, but as a sitting congresswoman, her current position trumps her previous distinctions, particularly during working visits abroad. Under reported by the media in which the administration managed to keep a tight tight rein, I sa kanya was Arroyo's yung kanyang tendency daw to venture opinions during the Washington meetings and almost just as, you know, but ayon sa kanya, medyo, you know, to insist on attending meetings na her presence was neither asked for or... In- so, ayon dito, may mga current diploma sinangyari to a certain degree. Or so, so, parang yun ang sinasabi dito. Now, what me- what other analysts are arguing, mga kameta, is that there was also an aspect of China-US here. No, there's also an aspect of President Roy having very strong views on us not being too reliant on China, and accordingly, her discomfort and expressed discomfort, no, with what's happening pagdating sa policy natin sa United States, which is tightening and tightening our military cooperation with her, no. So actually, there was another interesting um, article the other day, kung saan you know different. Analysts were looking at how yung Marcos pivot to, a- to U.S., pivot back to the U.S., is creating internal political rifts and that this whole Speaker of the House, Deputy Speaker of the House episode was somehow a reflection of that. No, Now, this is very interesting because, Kameta, more than a decade ago, no, in 2012, nakita din how the West Philippine Sea issue could be extremely uh, divisive sa Pilipinas. Kung maalala niyo yung episode na kung saan halos nag you know nag uh, nag talagang nag, halos nagsigawan niya ata or nag-away talaga openly si Enrile, then Senate President Juan Pense Enrile at ang versus si Trillanes, no? Because of their disagreement because of uh, doon sa Scarborough crisis. Now some are saying that etong friendliness ni Marcos sa US at yung potential provocation of China as a result Ang result nito uh, is nagkakaroon ng hiduan din domestically. So this is a very interesting uh, angle that I think has not been explored as much. But as I say, this is not unique. We also saw this back during the Scarborough Show era pa lang. Now how divisive can the West Philippines issue become? Not to mention, of course, during the President Duterte's term, you know, back then, medyo quiet si Bongbong Marcos, but we had an extremely polarized national discussion ukul sa foreign policy ni Duterte. What was interesting, although during the time of Duterte, is that yung mga supporters din niya, hindi masyado sangayan sa kanya, dun sa kanyang China policy. So that created some weird situation whereby the President has a 70-80% approval rating in generic terms, 
but 90% or so are against him when it comes to his China West Philippine Sea policy based din sa mga surveys na tinitingnan natin. So, a lot of people just say the president is popular. Well, they were looking at generic numbers, but they could see some key issues like China West Philippine Sea. The president was actually well outside the national consensus. I mean, by far, we are looking at 90% of Filipinos over and over saying different SW survey and Pulse Asia survey. Na, oh, Pulse Asia, remember, we're, we're quoting Pulse Asia that shows na hindi sang ayon mga taong bayan kay Paulong Duterte dun sa West Philippines issue. You can look at those things yourself. All the numbers are out there. Just type SWS or Pulse Asia West Philippines Sea survey. Kitang kita natin na President Duterte was a minority on these issues. And that really constrained this option and that made it very difficult for the president to go ahead and get rid of VFA or completely get rid of EDCA. Uh, forget about getting rid of the MDT or calling for a, you know official, uh, really systematic review of that. No, So we can see how the West Philippines issue and the China-US issue is having ripple effects, including exposing fault lines and divisions in the domestic Philippine politics. I think that's a very, very interesting thing to keep in mind, Mara Meta. No, I think... Uh, definitely, definitely, this is something that we should continue to watch out for uh, in the coming days and the coming weeks and the coming months, no? as President Marco Jr. tries to navigate this very, very difficult uh, uh, issue no? uh, for that matter. By the way, may mga tanong kayo, because I'm thinking, wait lang, para masyadong magulo if I bring also the Vietnam issue here. No, I mean, President Arroyo, uh, in fairness naman sa kanya, uh, when she was in power back then, at least early on in, in her early years, she was essentially trying to move on multiple fronts simultaneously. No, uh, If you look at President Arroyo, maybe let's just do a different blog than on the uh, Philippine and Vietnam because I think this is a quite a complex issue that we have to spend a lot of time on. Now, again, let me put the Arroyo foreign policy into perspective. And by the way, I think interview namin ni parang chubby ko nung dito sa picture na yan na, na. this was 2019 anyways I'll post the link dun sa interview namin so you can listen to the interview yourself right okay no no my point kasi is when it comes to uh, when it comes to President Arroyo oh at least ito lang picture para hindi ka nang kachaka so Feel free to check this uh, interview out with President Arroyo. I interviewed her uh, nung Kapuso Patay, no? so for, for GMA Network. So you can feel free to check this out. So, mga kameta, when I talk about the presidents, ex-presidents, I talk about these people, uh, you know, there are times, actually, we had the chance to talk to them very much in detail, no? Very, mu very much in detail. So, hindi tayo nagsasalita out of nowhere, no? So, again, you can just go to YouTube, just type, Hey, Darian, Gloria Royo, interview, lalabas yan. So, you can see, uh, we discuss extensively a lot of issues. This was live broadcasted. Um, and uh, one of the things we discuss is also her foreign policy. Now, ang basa kay President Royo is that, especially in her earlier years, she really tried to move on multiple fronts, not to indifferent, not too different from Marcos Sr. or, for that matter, even Ramos, no? Um, because, on one hand, she tried to be a reliable ally for the United States, in, in, especially during the global war on terror, right? Uh, in fact, during President Arroyo's time, the Philippines became a major non-NATO ally. That's the, te that's the technical or formal official term they use for the Philippines, major non-NATO ally to the U.S., Particularly during the global war on terror, we revised our mutual defense treaty and alliance to make it more relevant, mga kameta, uh, during the new and emerging security threats, non-traditional security threats, terrorism threats, dealing with Abu Sayyaf, and all of the antecedents of ISIS or Daesh. No? Um, now, if you look at Arroyo, at least in the f first years to mid-2000s, no? because most of the people, when you talk about a real administration, a real foreign policy, ang malala nila mga kameta is yung towards the end, yung NBNZT scandal, all of that, right? And especially after 2007 midterm elections and how things went kind of crazy there. But you have to remember that in the early 2000s and all the way to 2006 or so, Arroyo was trying to move on multiple fronts simultaneously, no? And quite deftly. So, on one hand, uh, yes, she, 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 doubled down and upgraded the alliance with the United States. 
There was tension with the U.S. dahil dun sa kanyang pag-withdraw ng Filipino troops from Iraq dun sa coalition of kunyari willing para mga na-pressured na countries ni Bush para lang sumali dun sa walang o sa kalokohan nilang gyera sa, sa Iraq. Uh, I mean, worse than kalokohan, ang dami namatay daw sa gyera na yan. Um, but it's not like the relationship with the U.S. broke down no? uh, during our real era. It was tense but it did not break down. And in fact, there was still significant foreign military financing and support coming for the Philippines during that royal era. No? Um, not to mention, there was a successful pressure on her administration to make sure na streamline yung macroeconomic stability, uh, yung macroeconomic conditions natin. So, a lot of good things that happened under uh, uh, Aquino, they didn't come out of nowhere. No, Actually, some of them, the foundations were laid down during Arroyo time. Some infrastructure projects for sure, but also yung uh, cutting down of fiscal deficit. I mean, again, that's it. The reality is messy. It's not like evil versus good. That's a problem with politics, especially populists. They make it evil versus good, but the reality is much more complicated. But anyway, the alliance with the U.S. was not, not totally in trouble. In fact, in 2016, uh, to, uh, sorry, 2006, 2005, if you read the WikiLeaks cable, I, I had to do that because I had to write the volume about what the WikiLeaks uh, reveal about American empire's policies in Southeast Asia. Actually, even the Americans were impressed with Aroy and how she was reaching also to China while maintaining the alliance with the United States. Remember yung visit niya to China and then pagbisita ng Wen Jiabao to the Philippines. I think this is 2005 or 2006. So a lot of exchanges were happening. And back then, China was still not seen as a major threat to the Philippines. It was rising economic power, peaceful rise supposedly. Hu Jintao was not as aggressive or whiplash style as Xi Jinping. At least also the early phase of Hu Jintao. But what's interesting is that Arroyo also tried to push for strong cooperation with fellow ASEAN countries, including Vietnam. So one of the things that she pushed for was the joint maritime seismic undertaking, a joint exploration deal that she wanted to push with Vietnam and China. Now, uh, kung napanood yung mga kometa, um, ano dis- sorry, may sale, may discount na lumabas. Okay, <laughs> kung napanood yung mga kometa, um, yung interview namin with si Teddy Cassini, etc., we discussed how actually the JMSU was unconstitutional and it very much undermined our national interest. Now, as I said, I'm not also happy with the JMSU in terms of its uh, structure, in terms of its implications, in terms of its circumstances. But you could also see that Arroyo was trying to keep everything on an even keel. Keep relations strong with the U.S., but not dependent on the U.S., reach out to China, but not just only to China, but keep the U.S. still there. At the same time, also reaching out to Vietnam with the JMSU deal. So, all of these things were important. She was so really the China, Vietnam, Philippines triangle is really an Arroyo kind of uh, legacy. Also, mga kameta, itong US, China, Philippines strategic ti- triangle, we also saw a lot of big things happening right and left, mga kameta. A lot of things uh, happening uh, right and left, mga kameta, pagdating sa Arroyo administration. So, a lot. So, what I could say is that the Arroyo era foreign policy legacy is very much with us, and it's a it's a it's a it's a mixed bag. No, I mean it's it's not a kind of a it's not a kind of all bad or all good. And at the same time, there are times the man hindi rin kasalanan Pilipinas because we were also adjusting to what the other powers were doing. But what I would argue is that the first, uh, at least or at least embers of potential strategic cooperation between Vietnam and the Philippines, you can really see that under Arroyo. Because of JMSU. Again, I'm not for JMSU, but I'm saying, but that was the anchor, no? Uh, except, except, of course, it was really under the Aquino era that we see this Philippine Vietnam relationship reaching the next level and then being undermined by Duterte. Let's just discuss that in a separate vlog, mga kameta. But, yun nga yung, yun nga yung ko eh, na, the more you think about it, that almost decade in power by Arroyo, it was like a 50 shades of policy mistakes and also gains or underappreciate gains and also underappreciate risks and problems you know? and since then we're still living with that legacy and I think that's why it's very important it's very important uh, to understand at balikan talaga yung legacy ni Arroyo and the fact that she's around uh, I don't know she's, she's, she's still trying to you know be around politically etc maybe she wants her form of you know she wants to feel vindicated she feels that history was unkind to her I don't know. We can we can we can discuss it, but my point is there are a lot of things about our current state of affairs that cannot be understood. Kung hindi mo tinignan na mabute, yung mga ginawa ni Arroyo, yung mga half na ginawa niya, yung mga hindi niya nagawa, 
So that decade was very crucial, Mahometa. That decade was very crucial. A lot of our relationship with China, Vietnam, U.S., these countries, roots of that you can find actually with President Arroyo. No? And President Arroyo, of course, is very, very influential in a sense that both Duterte and Marcos uh, actively praised her and tried to even draw on her, except, of course, the latest na konting iduana nangyari. And in the case of President Aquino, he tried to make his foreign policy the anti the anti Arroyo, right? So in that sense, he's also very much shaped by the Arroyo legacy. But even having said that, during his first year, President Aquino, the late President Aquino, uh, God bless his soul, he, he tried to also reach out to China and reason out uh, reason with China. For instance, he did not go to the Nobel Peace Prize ceremony for a Chinese Li Shabao um, uh, dissident back then, and a lot of people were like disappointed with that. He tried to extend the olive branch to China in 2010, 2011, etc. But really, things went downhill from 2012 onwards. No, so that's what I'm saying. The the Arroyo legacy is very, very important, Mahometa. And again, to better understand where I'm coming from, uh, look at you. Kindly check your interview uh, interview with uh, former President Arroyo a few years earlier. She was Speaker of the House back. Uh, this is 2018, I think. 2019, 2018, 2019. No, so please kindly check your interview now, man. And balikan natin isong itong issue na to because I feel this Philippine, Vietnam, China, U.S., all of these relationships, in one way or another, I'll have to start with Arroyo. And then from there, we'll discuss more. Now, what I want to also discuss is there are a lot, a lot of these people, especially pro tatai people or pro-China people there who try to portray Vietnam as the threat to the Philippines. The, Fili the Vietnamese, yes, they took some of the islands that the Philippines was claiming or occupying back in the day, given an but we don't see since the end of Cold War any direct threat by, by Vietnam militaries to the Philippines in one way or another. And we'll discuss that further later on. And by the way, don't some henyo dyan, wag niyo compare yung reclamation in China sa ginagawa ng Vietnam. Yes, Vietnam has been doing some reclamation, etc. That's true. But it's like NBA versus PBA level. And levels matter. So drawing a false equivalence between the two of them, um, kasama dyan, yung isang mga na natin dyan, yung isang... Uh, ano, pro-tatay na senador dyan. Oh, alam nyo na yan. Connect the dots, mga kameta. Okay. Anyways, thank you very much, mga kameta. Balikan natin itong topic na ito soon. Salamat dito sa mga supporters natin dyan. Yan, kay Ma'am Jocelyn, kay Sir Sarson, kay Royce Samontanes, kay Andre Ilianes, kay Ma Victoria. Thank you very much sa lahat ng mga nagko-comment-comment comment dito. Ayan, pinag-usapan pa. Yeah, check nyo rin yung mga, ano natin, yung mga Wikileaks analysis natin. Mahanap nyo rin yan. Oh, Na-analyze po natin mga yan. O, yan. Thank you very much din dito sa mga kaibigan natin sa yan sa Facebook, 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 Pace na hindi na Face. All right, kay Etenolonan, kay Mia Fresnito, thank you very much. Uh, kay uh, Mar uh, Marisa Mandal, yes, that's true. If, if Mia Fresnito, a lot of people remember the Hello Garci, uh, a lot of people remember the NBNZT, but a lot of other things were also happening that decade, right? with huge geopolitical implications and implications for our foreign policy, you know? Salamat din kay Christy Aguilar, kay Noemi Tablat, kay Norman uh, Plete, na imbag ng Rabi Din Kapsat. Thank you very much kay Brav Pitt, yan, Ma Madrigal Heya, yan. Lahat naman na nanonood sa atin. Balita ko si, ano ah, pangalan niyo, um, balita ko si, what's his name? Ay, si Christian Esguerra, nag everyday na rin siya. Wow, talaga. At, at uh, si Christian Esguerra ay uh, nag-live na rin. So I'm good to see, you know. We're all picking up, you know, things from each other, inspiration, etc. I'm not claiming you got it from me, but I'm glad to see that he's coming out more and more. Kasi yun nga, mga kameta, kailangan ng spontaneous production talaga. I, I mean, of course, mga kameta, meron tayong, ngayon, thank God, meron tayong sariling show, uh, mainstream media show, etc. So yun, of course, my process yan. But, if you're gonna do social media, really my advice, mga kameta, is to be as spontaneous, relatable as possible. Don't overdo it. Uh, chill lang. So I'm glad that, you know, Christian is scary. A lot of sane people out there, a lot of good people out there, a lot of patriotic people out there are getting more engaging, more active. Kasi yung mga bloggers na iba, alam nyo na mga yan, nako, everyday, tatlo, apat, lima yung mga hanash na mga yan, yung mga marites na mga yan. Kaya, yung mga talaga sa mga yan, alright? So thank you very much again, mga kameta, and God bless, and talk to you soon.